Good Saturday morning. We're, of course, studying the Lord's Prayer, and, and uh, we're moving into the, 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 next, um, the next verse that says this, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, some of you may say trespass, and there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, as we look at it and we get into the original, all right, uh, the King James has it correct in the New King James, where it says debts. I was joking with somebody about it, and, uh, and I, they said to me, well, why did they change it? I said, well, because they needed a new denomination. There was something to argue over, so they decided to start another denomination. Joking around about it. But here is, here is the, uh, here's the Greek when it says that. It says, ta ophilimata himon. Ta ophilimata himon. Which, when you look at it, it is a, a debt, a price to pay, is what it means. It's a debt. It's a debt. And so, actually, the, the actual word, when we look at it in Matthew, is debt. Now, I think what happens is we go down, we see trespasses later on. And so, for that assumption, it became the trespasses up, up top to, to try to uh, eliminate confusion. But to really know what, what's going on, it's a debt. It is, in fact, it's different than what's in Luke. In Luke chapter 4, in, in, or in chapter 11, verse 4, it, it's, uh, they use the word harmartias, which equals sins. Okay, forgive us our sins, not forgive us our debts. Though they mean the same as far as when it comes to spiritual things. So, but here's what we know for sure. It clearly means this. Lord, forgive me of my sins. That's really what it's saying. Uh, when we look at it and we see the, 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 the trespasses, it, it became a, a mistranslation over, over the years. And it actually came from uh, the, the common, um, uh, it, was, it was made common by the Church of England prayer book is where it came out years and years ago. And that's why we, like I said, so it started an argument and we end up with another denomination through it all. But clearly, clearly, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In Romans 3.23, it says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23 says, And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And what does that mean? It means this, that we have a debt we have a wage we have to pay. We are getting paid for that debt when we sin. And it's only through the blood of Christ Jesus, all right, that that debt is paid for us. Because the debt's still paid. It has to be paid, but it's paid through his blood. Instead of our sacrifice, his sacrifice. So when we ask uh, uh, God to forgive us of our debts, we're asking, us, we're asking him, please, Lord, forgive me of my debts, my transgressions against you. But it goes on to say, as I forgive my debtors. So please forgive me of my transgressions the way I have forgiven others of transgressions against me. If we turn a few pages, and you should be in Matthew chapter 6 as we're doing this study, but we're going to turn a few pages to Matthew 18, and we're going to look at verses 28 uh, through 30, and it says this. But the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he, he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but he went and threw him into the prison till he could pay his debt. Jesus used this parable as an example of this servant who owed so much money to the Lord. In fact, if you look and find out, the money that he owed was you couldn't pay it back in a lifetime. The denarii he owned, it would, it would have taken hundreds of years of wages to pay it back. 
and the Lord forgave him of his debt, then what did he do? He went out and found somebody that owed him money and showed no forgiveness at all. So Jesus uses this uh, parable to really bring it to life in the Lord's Prayer. So what it says is this, is if we don't have a heart to forgive those that transgress against us, how can we expect our Father in Heaven to forgive us? God expects us to have a forgiving heart. Oh, I know. I know they did this and they did that. And if you knew that was wrong, if you had any idea, Pastor Stan, I don't care. I don't care. All right? Because here's what it means. I don't care about the debt. I care about your relationship with your God. And every one of us, we've all, we've all had transgressions put against us. And we have to be forgiven. Forgiving. We have to be forgiving. So we can in turn be forgiven. All right? So let's, let's understand what it says every time we recite the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. God, forgive me of all the transgressions I've made against you, just like I forgive others. It becomes very powerful. It's more than just words. Amen? Amen. Father God, we, we look at this, and these words are tough. They're tough. Because our human nature is we not to forgive. Our human nature is to hold a grudge. But Jesus, you are the example. When you stood, sat on that cross and you hung on that cross, Lord God, and you said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. We are forgiven everything. And we pray, Lord God, that we have a heart to forgive others. That our debt is paid, that their debt is paid. We know, Lord, that if we can't do that, we can never grow close to you. And that's our prayer today, Lord God, is that we grow closer and closer to you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And tomorrow is Sunday. So don't forget, we have Word of Encouragement tomorrow, and we're live at 5. We, church is open. We invite you to be here. But if you can't, please watch us live at 5. God bless you all.